What are you doing? Oh, is that right? She doesn't like it when I'm. That's funny. presidential campaigns. Could you put this year's Democratic primary debates into some sort of larger context? You know, political debates in this country have always been spectacles. We have now heard the leading argument of the two candidates, Judge Stephen A. Douglas and Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Each of the candidates will now speak in rebuttal. Lincoln and Douglas barnstormed around Illinois in the 1850s. Like Brutus, in Shakespeare's immortal tragedy, Mr. Lincoln is an honorable man. I grew up in Peoria, Illinois, and there's a plaque by the courthouse saying this is the site of the Lincoln-Douglas debate where however many thousand people came to watch them speak. But also like Brutus, he is an adept at the art of inserting daggers between an opponent's ribs just when said opponent least expects it. You know, that was about getting their message out to the biggest audience they could. Behold me, ladies and gentlemen. I am covered with stars. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. And Kennedy and Nixon in 1960. The question before us is, which point of view, and which party do we want to leave the United States? When the people Sabrina! Thought, Sabrina! Senator Kennedy and I are not in disagreement as to the game. We both want to help the old people. People who listened to it on the radio thought that Nixon did better. Hector Green, did you turn on my phone? You asked for me. Ronald Reagan. You can make an announcement first. And I asked you His campaign paid for its own primary debate in New Hampshire. And as the moderator tried to cut Reagan off. To make an announcement. With the, uh, with the sound man, please turn Mr. Reagan's mic off. And then... Reagan told him, I paid for this microphone. I am paid for this microphone, Mr. That moment in that debate in New Hampshire is really a point that political historians look at that really helped turn around the 1980 campaign for Ronald Reagan and propelled him to the nomination and the presidency. And so that's sort of where we've come from. Uh, but this year, things actually are a lot different. As of today, the Democratic Party tells us that they have decided to make room on the debate stage for up to 20 candidates. So, Reed, let's talk about what's changed. Where should we start? Well, the first thing that's new is the qualifications for these debates. Joining us now is Tom Perez, chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Rachel. Democratic National Committee, after watching the last two cycles, in 2012, the Republicans had, you know, 20 some debates. And in 2016, the Republican debates were sort of marred in part by sort of Donald Trump's insult theater, while the Democratic debates were widely seen within the party as being tilted in the favor of Hillary Clinton. This is what it's all about. It's about giving the candidates a stage to give their vision of America. So Tom Perez, the party chairman, when he ran... But she got both paws in the most <laughs> convoluted way. Do you want me to move them? Hey, he... Oh my God, <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, hold on. 
in the debates. To qualify for making it onto the debate stage at all, for being one of the 20, right? Uh, the threshold for inclusion is interesting. It has two components. The June and July debates have meant the candidates had to have 65,000 donors. And a minimum of 200 unique donors per state in at least 20 Smile. States. For the September and October debates, that number will double to 130,000 donors. Hmm. What it will do is it 